Last year I have bought the uh, table weekly table planner which I never used so I decided to tea dye those papers. I do have a video where I am showing the process of tea dyeing my pages. I will link it down below. Hello and welcome to Bohemian Crafting. As I showed you, uh, I did use those planner weekly sheets to create beautiful journals with very decorative spine where you can see your stitching and i did uh, create kind of like a lap book style journal cover which can be totally jumped back with goodies pockets openings frames it's very versatile and it's not hard to create this journal i believe even beginners can do it and you can add any kind of uh, another decorative papers and you can totally enjoy to create this journal it does have beautiful flexible spine so it's very pleasant to write in and it does have so much space so you can you can load it this type of journal with so much goodies so come to join me hopefully you will enjoy this tutorial so all papers from that weekly planner i did tea dyed and uh, i already let them dry and I pre-fold them on the half. If you will have planner like this with weekly weekly spread, you can actually create beautiful signatures with that. Once you will have tea dyed them, fold it on half. You can put one paper folded with the design inside, then another paper folded with the plain uh, plain side, back side, inside. And if you will place them together, and then another with folded design inside place here so your image it's continuing really nicely and you can add there another one exactly same way fold the design in outside and place it here so you will have to spread of the weekly planner in the one row and then you will have plain pages where you can write anything you need to write down another material which i do have around in a huge amount are these amazing wonderful folders it's long time ago when i first saw uh, lab books and they been made by kathy orta unfortunately kathy orta channel it's no longer available she made such a beautiful i think the most beautiful lab books i ever saw she made so many tutorials unfortunately as i said they are not uh, available anymore that was first time when i heard about lab books then i googled it and i found that lab books are used uh, at school and they are made from two file folders which are glued together so they do make kind of bigger spread for for uh, children to do their homeworks i'm gonna be using these file folders not just for inside pages but also to make interesting cover i do have already my papers tea dyed and folded on half prepared to add to my signatures I'm going to take red file folders and I'm going to create additional tab pages for my journal and also extra tag pages, which will be decorative in this journal. I want to fit my papers inside to those file folders where I will create tabs. So I'm going to cut those file folders, those red file folders, slightly bigger than my papers, than my pages. As you saw, I'm making mark with my pen uh, where I should cut the file folder to make it slightly bigger. And at the same position, I'm going to make a mark on the opposite side. That I'm going to measure with the ruler and make a mark. And then I'm going to cut that bottom strip with the knife and with that I'm gonna create also extra 
folded strips which I will use in my journal as an additional text. I have cut it all of my five folders to the size of the pages which I need for my future signature. I do have also these off cuts from the bottom and I would like to use these papers inside of my journal as well. They are longer than the papers in the signature, those weekly planners. So I'm gonna cut them down. For that I'm gonna be using guillotine. I'm gonna grab pen. Take one of these off cuts from the file folders, place it to my paper, which will be in my signature and make a mark here on the bottom. And I'm going to cut these where I do have that mark. It's open like this, so I will have little tucks. Or I mean pieces for future tucks. Because I don't like these sharp corners. Here I'm gonna be using envelope punch board and I'm gonna punch these corners with envelope punch board first. It makes them beautifully curved and also decorative. Also, but I need to punch a little bit more. I like this. So I do have decorative ends on these extras and I'm going to be stacking them around my papers. It will be like extra page for writing or maybe some holder for photography. I believe it will look amazing in my signatures. So I'm going to do this way all of these off cuts with my little folders. First what I'm going to do, I'm going to score them in the size which I need for my papers. As you can see, the folder, it's longer here on this side. So I can either, yeah, leave it this way and score it here on this side. So I will have a little, little flat or I can start to score it from this side. And then I will have a little flap on this end, uh, kind of like bigger flap, I want to say bigger flap on this end. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start to fold this folder from the scratch. For that, I'm going to take my scoring board. I'm going to place here my papers and measure how big folder I need. This is seven and a half inches. So I would like to have seven and a half inches front page made from this file folder. But I, I also would like to have their tap. So before I will start to score, I'm going to create that tap. I'm going to move my scoring board for a second. I'm going to grab back my envelope punch board because that's the tool I'm using all the time for creating taps. And I'm going to create a tap maybe here on the top. Very easy way punch one side then I think I'm gonna have top three inches long three and a half so this here this edge I'm gonna put on three and a half punch again now this leftover kind of ish I'm gonna cut off like this and now depends on how I would like to see the top so if I will have a if I will want to have the top this top over the edges so I will see it from this way uh, like full tap I'm gonna place my file folder with that tap over the zero and I'm gonna start with this edge on the zero here if I would like to have that tap just here this way so I will don't see it uh, from the opposite side I will place my file folder with the tap on the zero this way but I would like to see the top peeking out a little bit over the edges of my papers that's why I'm gonna move this left uh, kind of like <laughs> bottom part of my file folder on the zero here and I'm gonna score seven and a half now I'm gonna move this score line on the zero 
and I know I need to score again seven and a half. That's where my papers are, seven and a half inch. And I'm gonna fold in these score lines here and maybe this way. So I just created new page for my journal where these papers can fit perfectly and I will have visible tap on each side. And I will have extra flap here on the end. This could be reinforced with some decorative papers over this. And I would like to see cascading tabs in my journal. For that I need to create those tabs on different spots on my file folders. I do have another file folders cut it in the same size on the height of my future journal. And before I will score them uh, in this size, I'm going to create those another tabs and I want to have those cascading tabs. So I do have the top one. Now I'm going to create the bottom one before I will create the middle one. So this I'm going to take for creating that bottom one. I'm gonna punch the side then I'm gonna flip it over and again like before I'm gonna slide this side to the three and a half but same like I did before and punch I'm gonna cut off that rest like this so I do have tap on the bottom one on the top one on the bottom now I can take that third file folder and if you remember, I did punch to those sides in three and a half. I'm going to go slightly smaller, three and one quarter, which will make that top fitting between those two before. I'm kind of creating position in that valley. And cutting off this. Then flip it over, again slide it here on the top and slide it here to the knife, to the bottom knife, this one. And cut. Like this. Once I had prepared all my file folders and also all pages which I want to use inside, I started to put together some signatures. My signatures are made from these file folders and also extra decorative papers and these tea dyed weekly planner pages. So I added here and there some extras like my uh, extra junk papers and extra printed papers to make it a little bit more interesting I can still add there uh, maybe some book pages and then I did variety of uh, signatures and as you can see I did use my white painting and I did splatters over these file folders just to add there a little bit more uh, interesting look I like these splatters to have them on my project because they do look so artistic that's why I add them uh, into these uh, red file folders so here I do have again printed paper with some music sheet and here you can see how I added those off cuts then we do have weekly planned papers then we do have another printed papers some designed papers from paper path Again, weekly planner paper. And that's another signature. And as I said, I can still add there some book pages. And then I, I go again with the <clears throat> file folder, some decorative paper, weekly planner papers. And then a bunch of... Uh, tea dyed, coffee dyed papers and some uh, designed papers. So it's always a mix of things. I think I'm gonna um, 
mix of different papers i think i'm gonna have a look on book pages because i'm kind of missing here book pages they are beautiful addition to journals and this one oh yeah this way good i do have prepared all my signatures for the journal I'm gonna start to work on a cover for my journal. For the cover, I'm gonna be using same file folders. I am very much inspired by lab books to create the cover. Uh, I'm gonna measure how big spine I do have here. Uh, it looks like four centimeters, one and a half inch. First, I'm gonna cut two file folders. In the same high like I do have these. I also created tabs on one side of these file folders and now I'm gonna uh, score it. As I know, my signatures are seven inches here. That's what I'm gonna be using for scoring. And I did measure the spine of my book is one and a half of the signatures is one and a half when I'm laying them down. So here, first score line will be seven and a half, same like my pages from that weekly planner. Then I'm gonna move this score line on zero. And I'm gonna score seven and three quarter. And one and uh, nine and a half. I'm gonna add here one and three quarter of inch. This will be spine. And this I scored one quarter of an inch longer than this first piece. Just because I wanna have that small gap between the top here on the end and the spine itself this is going to be folded and this will be spine of my book so like this now i'm gonna do same with that second piece so first including the top I'm gonna score seven and a half. Then I'm gonna move this score line on zero. And again, score seven and three quarter and nine and a half. So with the both pieces, I do have a little gap between the spine and that front fold and between the spine and that kind of like back cover fold this will be my front cover so i'm gonna flip it this way this will be back cover i'm gonna flip it this way here this is spine so i'm gonna fold it this way and here i'm gonna slide it to that fold here so i'm gonna kind of match spine to spine like this i'm gonna put the glue here on this spot and now slide it both together i'm gonna first glue one side make it match with the fold and press it down then i'm gonna fold this over put the glue here then open it make it flat and press it all together now i'm gonna let it dry while the cover will be drying i'm gonna prepare uh, signatures for sewing in I do have here a strip of paper which I will use as a help for poking my signatures at the same spots. Uh, the paper folded 
it's just uh, some left over from from previous work so i do have it folded and it's in the same leg like are my signatures so for counting uh, the spaces between uh, holes i'm gonna be using the measurement in centimeters and i'm gonna use my calculator here just to make sure it's uh, it's calculated the right way uh, i need four uh, four holes to make four holes which means there will be five equal spaces between those holes this is 24.677 24.7 divided by 5 it's oh 4.9 nearly 5 yeah that should be nearly 5 right <laughs> okay i'm gonna take 5 5 then 5 5 from the bottom and if the middle will be slightly smaller i don't mind that much so five and five the middle will be slightly smaller but those sides are equal so i do have uh, pointed where I'm going to make a holes and where my signatures will be sewn in the spine of the book cover. So I'm going to back, go back with my book cover. I think this is already dry. Now, this spot here, it's the spine of my book. And in that spot here, I'm going to be cutting slots. I'm going to be cutting slots in these four spaces. So I'm going to use my paper to mark those spaces here 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 now i'm gonna move this do the same and now with the knife and the ruler i'm gonna cut these slots From the fold to the fold on the spine. I'm gonna make sure that all it's open, that I will don't accidentally cut through too many layers here. And as the spine is glued from two file folders, this may take a little time. So I'm gonna pause my camera and take my time to create small slots here and I will come back. I do have cut four slots in my spine where there can go the needle. Now I'm gonna grab my signatures and I'm gonna start to poke my signatures. You can use your, uh, I'm gonna, I can use this paper as a help when I'm poking the holes and I can poke either this way. That's what I did for many years, that I had it lay down on my table. I need to flip it this way to have to make sure I will see the holes or those marks, I mean. So I can do it this way and then poke kind of like, uh, imagine here, divide this into two equal spaces to make 45 degrees uh, angle here and poke or because I do have my poking cradle and it's done, that's a really amazing tool to have. I'm going to be using that. So this is my homemade poking cradle. I made a video where I am creating this with the classic book binding, which is very similar to this one. So now I can put my signature in and where there are the marks, I can poke the holes in through to my signatures, through to those papers. It's very easy with this poking cradle. I'm sure that uh, there will be not hole through to you know front of my paper. It will be always in a default. I do have prepared and poked uh, the holes in all my signatures, as you can see. I do have cut the slot or 
um, I do have cut that line in the spine of the cover here four lines and the main goal of the sewing the book the way I would like to show you today is to make visible stitching visible sewing of your signatures into your journal so you will actually see the thread it's going through and you will have beautiful decorative spine it's very easy to do uh, yet when I did sewn this first book this is actually same made like this one I noticed that uh, it takes a time if you don't have a little bit space here in these cuts so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna grab my ruler and knife and cut slightly bigger entry here that will make all stitching much much easier and better and faster so I'm gonna just extend here these gaps not big not big gap just a slightly bigger like this hope you can see that the entry it's really very small the gap is very small yet this will make a huge difference once i will start to sew so i'm gonna do same with all my slots and here i have to go with a little bit future video i somehow paused my camera and forgot to switch it on back again to show you those slots but i did those uh, kind of like bigger slots in all that spine and i started to sew my signatures in which i forgot to record but luckily i do have uh, sewing all the signatures in the kind of like late stage when I do have already a few sewn in so here you can see that I'm starting in the bottom hole and I'm going through to all pages and then I'm going to that bottom slot in my uh, in my book cover wrapping around the edge of the cover and I'm making knot here and I have to say I'm sewing every single each signature separately i'm not keeping one thread through to all of my signatures i'm sewing them separately that makes it that makes it easier if i will decide later to swap the signatures so i can cut the thread pull out the signature and place it on different spot and i can also uh, if the thread will get broken through the time i can also re-sew it again without losing many signatures here you can see that from that first hole i'm going inside of my journal to the second hole around the uh, the cover <laughs> how how i should explain it around that cover spot or you know that uh, spine spot to that next hole inside through to that signature outside to, to the spine of the cover it's like going you know in and out with the thread <laughs> it's hard to explain but i hope you will understand what i'm doing here again on the end i'm going around the edge of the papers and inside of my signature i'm gonna make a a, a knot i'm gonna make a knot here and I'm gonna try to tie it nicely, hold the thread till I'm making that knot. It's very easy to, to create, uh, to sew signatures this way, and it's kind of like, you know, relaxing, uh, relaxing craft. So here I'm making knot, I'm gonna cut the thread, and I'm gonna start uh, with the new signature and with the new thread. So I do have sewn another signature, unfortunately. <laughs> I paused my camera at the moment where I'm not supposed to pause, I'm sorry. So uh, this way that I'm going to sew each signature separately, I'm going to continue till the end of the book. And once you do have sewn all signatures, it's time to spread the sewing, spread the signatures with some nice gaps between. And you can start to decorate it. You can start to put some laces and some beautiful papers on your folder. Maybe some frames, maybe some pockets. Anything you want. You do have that base. Here you can see I tried to 
uh, form the spine a little bit to that curve shape because I like it always more when it's curved like old books were. So I just play with it to make it a little bit curved, not that flat. And because, you know, it's kind of like soft spine. But uh, soft yet strong because it's glued from two file folders. And here I wanted to add also color. So I glued it, glued over the file folder. I glued uh, paper tape, brown paper tape. And here I glued these two beautiful laces I received from Sophie. They are really gorgeous. So you can start to decorate uh, your journal and add there your touches and make it yours. So this is how it looks when you don't have uh, any tape, any decorative paper, this is how it looks when you put there some tape. You can always add uh, on the thread some beads or something like that. Uh, but I wouldn't make it too much because on this spine it's actually what is catching your eye. Uh, are those threads it's that sewing what is interesting maybe i will add some decoration here on these two spots but that, that's all i guess and then i will uh, i will concentrate to decorate the tabs the pages the cover front cover back cover that will be the most things i, I will concentrate on these journals so that was my sharing for today. Uh, I will put both of these journals for sale as they are uh, because I don't have a right now time to kind of decorate it, finish it. I do have open a uh, few other projects, uh, especially for my Patreons. I have to finish a family halo. I started before my, uh, before my accident, which I need to finish. I'm not sure why is it there, this one. So I finally gathered back all my stuff because my sons kind of place it everywhere. After my surgery, they had to make space for me in my room. So they place it on different spaces. So it took a time. And also I'm working here and there on projects uh, where I am using my Halloween collection. So I'm creating stuff from my Halloween collection, uh, pumpkin patch. I made small sharing of this collection on my Instagram, but it was like very small sharing. So here it's better sneak peek. It's uh, inspired by that orangey that pumpkin orangey because my mom told me this year she has amazing uh, amount of pumpkins from her garden she was quite surprised how many she uh, had this year so <laughs> it was inspired me uh, to create this collection I and I already started to use those papers and I have to say that I do enjoy it very very much so these are now projects which i will be concentrated the most the halloween uh, halloween the family halo and some halloween projects so this is collection which i do have also on my etsy for those who are interested who like halloween and i'm editing all the time some extras for uh, Halloween projects like now there will be a collection with ephemeras with little ephemeras So this is collection for this year. Uh, if I will be successful on Sunday market, there will be also dice for this one, uh, which I got from Sunday market. They are very cute. So if I will be successful, these dice will be also uh, on my on my Etsy for sale there. <laughs> so cute. Uh, this underneath, what do you see? That's a uh, Tim Holtz die. That, uh, it's that arc window i just place it upside down and i created these cute little halloween uh, halloween boxes 
so this is all my sharing for today i'm gonna move this aside this was sharing for today thank you so so much for joining me today if you are interested to buy this plain journal with some goodies uh, from me uh, go to have a look on my etsy link will be down below thank you so so much for joining me today thank you so much to all of my amazing patreons without them i wouldn't be here right now really uh, without them i wouldn't have a time or have a courage to continue with this uh, because it would be very difficult for me to have that that time for for craft so that's that's huge huge thanks to all my patreons they are amazing thank you so much guys uh, this is all my sharing thank you very much for spending your time with me have a wonderful day take care of yourself and i will come back soon bye